Hey guys, welcome to the video. Um, today I'm going to be going over with y'all how I built my nano skiff and uh, some tips and tricks I learned along the way of converting a uh, catamaran paddleboard into a skiff. So um, basically what I was trying to do with this project is I'm a kayak fisherman normally, but I wanted to be able to get further and uh, reach more spots on the flats. Um, so I wanted something that I could still paddle. I wanted something that didn't have to have a trailer or anything like that. You know, it could either be deflated or something like that and put in a car or just put on a roof. Um, and then I wanted it to be able to be stored inside my house because I live in an apartment, so I do not have a garage. Um, so that was the basis for it. Um, I My main inspiration was the Live to Fish paddleboard. Um, I saw what they did and I really liked that idea. I just didn't have that kind of budget. Um, so I came up with this. Um, so let's get into it. So I went and picked up the board from a guy in San Antonio. There's me picking it up. And I got straight back to the ranch and we rigged up this first transom that you can see there. That was me running the motor for the first time. Uh, so you can see there the transom comes up, makes a 90 and then has the uh, piece of wood so that was my original transom you're gonna see what happened with that in a second so i got that on there it's actually working pretty good um, as you can see here we're running it around for about i don't know 30 minutes uh, just on the little pond there at the ranch it was working pretty good it was getting up on plane and uh it's carving pretty good so i was having the ball out there as you can see it's moving pretty good um, it's not super fast, but it, it definitely moves faster than a kayak, so. Um, so there you go. So here's some more footage of me while I was welding that transom up. It's flux core welding in a windy barn, so forgive me. Um, it's not, it doesn't look too pretty, but um, I can't remember what I'm saying in that video, but it doesn't really matter. So again, that was me building the transom originally. I just had it where it bolted onto the board. So this board I found actually had bolt holes in it where you could mount a transom. And they sold it right there. You could see they sold the transom online for about 250 bucks. And so I obviously was like, oh, it's too expensive. I'll build my own. And so that's what I came up with at first. Now, um, this is where things went bad. So you see... Um, me test running the motor here. So what actually happened right after that video me test run and it ended is the motor snapped off and fell in the water. Um, so I was able to get a rope tied, get it pulled back up. And uh, as you can see, there's the fuel and the oil that came out of it. Um, obviously that video of it running was after I changed all the fluids. Uh, and we changed fluids again, got it running. Sprayed it down good with uh, some anti-corrosion stuff, and it was fine. No big deal there. We had to repair the board where it ripped the mounts out. Um, so I can see why the transom they designed now has a piece where it kind of clamps the board so it goes under and over. And so you're going to see here in my next design how I remedied that um, with my transom. So... So you can see here, I came back and um, uh, we redid this piece. So I had it coming as a 90 and that was just, it was just bolted, but it put too much leverage on those bolts and it ripped the mounts out. So I cleaned up the holes where the mounts went and I filled them with uh, fiberglass epoxy and then uh, to make a cavity. And then I filled the cavity in with JB, uh, um, JB steel stick um, to actually hold the the bolts and that's worked pretty well um, and then you can see that back piece I did there um, and we'll get into that in a second but um, basically I had to what I was explaining here is I had to repair the the cavities there that were made when it ripped the mounts out um, so again, if you're going to do something like this, you got to make sure that you do a clamping design where 
Uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about here. Uh, over there, I was saying I cut my finger. I was working with the the cut off wheel there to cut out that backboard, that back brace right there, and uh, and I cut myself pretty good. But uh, once the video gets going here, I'll uh, show the bottom so you can see. I've got that plate that extends along the bottom. So it's clamping the board now. And, uh, and then also that piece going along the top, as you saw, to put pressure on the rear pontoons to keep the transom from wanting to tilt backwards. So the combination of those two things makes a big difference. Um, if you're gonna stick with a, like a three, five horsepower, you could probably just honestly get away with putting that back brace um, but putting that clamping piece on there makes a big difference on the stability of it. I did notice it brought my speed down a little bit. Um, I think that's just because of the extra weight and the drag in the water. So I probably figure out something to do there. Maybe slot the holes so that I can adjust it further in. And that would take some of that gap out. Um, but again, there you can see. Got it rebolted, got that back brace on there. And um, and that was pretty good to go. There's a couple areas you can see here, the white spots there on the on the rear of the hole where I had the repair from when the motor broke off. The mount kind of whacked into the hole a couple spots and cracked it. So I had to fill those with epoxy. Um, just a little bit more on this board. It's made by a company called Anecdote Outdoors. And I found them on Facebook Marketplace, actually. And there's a, they're out of California, but the guy's brother who owns the company lives in San Antonio. And he, um, he does, you know, just like a little side hustle dropship type selling stuff on the side. And so he bought like eight or nine of these boards from his brother and he's been selling them but i guess he's been having trouble selling them because normally the board goes for about twelve hundred dollars oh and here we go we can see i'm um, sorry to interrupt myself but <laughs> here we go i got the new transom on there you can see how it was all welded up with the braces and now that's working real good and uh, i haven't had any trouble with it so but back to the board the uh the guy was normally selling them online. They sell for $2,100 now. That includes free shipping. So I think the difference in price there is the shipping price because it's definitely got to be pretty expensive to ship it. Um, so there's me on the Intercoastal. It worked good. Um, a, uh, a side note there is that... Um, it wasn't as fast as I thought, so I'm gonna rearrange some stuff and I'll get into that. But, um, so anyhow, back to the board. Um, the guy, like I said, was selling them for 1200. I found he was doing a sale, like in the summer sale. I think he's just trying to clear his garage out of them. Um, and uh, I was able to get one for 800. He had a couple used ones for 600, but they were pretty warped. So, um, just be aware. They were cracked, and I had several cracks in those, so. I mean, any fiberglass board or something that, um, you know, is foam lined on the inside. If you let it get water in it and then sit in the heat, it will warp. So uh, I didn't want the used ones, but I, I went with one of the uh, new ones, and it's worked out great. Um, the uh, You can find these online, actually, but they're $2,100 online. So, obviously, that's not worth it if I was able to pay $800 for one in person um, for a brand new one. And it came with a paddle, fins, all that. Um, so, uh, you can see me testing it out there. Um, here's me out on the... Uh, that was me out on the Packery Channel with it. Um... But it's been a pretty solid board. It, it weighs 45 pounds. Um, and so it's super easy. The car top and the move around. Um, the transom weighs, I think, like 
20 pounds almost, and then the, uh, you know, my gear, um, is all very light, and the motor is real light, so it just makes for a super easy thing. I can just throw it on, you know, within 10 minutes, I can have everything unloaded and loaded up into the truck from my apartment, have it on the roof, and be headed out to the coast. Um, I only live about 45 minutes from the coast, so... Uh, once I get out there, another 10 minutes, I'm set up and in the water. So it really didn't take any longer setting up and um, taking down than a regular boat. So, so here I just want to show the um, what I think is going to be the final setup here. So you see in the video, I took it out and I had all the weight, the extra weight up here. Because I think I thought I was thinking I would make it plan out better. But the problem is... If you have the front low, this lift on this board, as you see, it's it's I mean, it's kind of, I mean, it's lifted up you know, from the sides, but it'll slap against this hole, and it gets really wet. Um, instead of having like real rounded pontoons like the live the fish does, real like deeper pontoons, this uses a thick deck to get the stability and it's super stable i mean it's really stable I mean, it feels like a floating dock but it still paddles really fast which is nice um but uh but you know waves come up they hit that and then psh, they splash up in you so that's one little one annoying thing about it um so on the front you're just gonna have a little cooler to, Get some gloves in there because it cut my hand really bad, so I uh, don't want the salt water getting in it. Uh, so I'll wear the gloves. Uh, and then um, my GoPro. This is my little speaker goes here. And then there's a little uh, lanyard over there to clip it to so that it doesn't end up in the water. Um, then the cooler. You can see I have this little cooler which is where I actually keep like my waters or beer or whatever. Um, and then this one's actually just my, my, uh, storage console. So, every boat needs storage console. So, I've got a dry bag. This will have just, like, anything I really don't want getting wet. Um, some food, whatnot. Uh, then I've got a little fuel transfer pump. Um, using these things can be a bitch. So, sometimes I'll just... I don't even have to unclip this. I just take the cap off and uh, use that to fill it up. Or if I have to, if I'm out of gas and I need to borrow some gas from another guy's boat, I can uh, can use that. Uh, life jacket, obviously, gotta have that right here in this little slot. Uh, is my tool kit. I really like it. It's in there good. Uh, got some marine weld, some JB, uh, JB weld marine weld, lighter, whatever. Uh, little multi tools, set of pliers, all the wrenches and sockets I would need to work on the motor. Uh, it's pretty much, I can pretty much assemble that entire motor with this tool kit, which is nice. And I got some. This is for repairing the board, and then any repairs need to be made to like a chipped prop or whatever, something um, on the motor or something metal or the mount or something needs fixing. I got some JB steel screw. That will also work on fiberglass too if it needs to be a stronger repair. And there it all goes is one of those $6 Walmart waterproof cases. And then it just slots perfectly right there in between the wheel wells and cooler. This is my little camping chair. It's nice to set up on the beach or I can set it up on the front deck here and keep my feet up on the cooler. And a little table again if I'm hanging out the beach. And then got some extra oil, duct tape, and some cheap flies that I'm doing here. Filet knife, some gloves. This is my little e -perb. it's just my Motorola device, I like communicator that I use when I'm camping and everything. I just put it in a waterproof floaty uh, plano box, and that way 
if this thing sinks or whatever and the cooler goes down with it, it'll this this isn't latch, so it'll open up from the air pressure. And this will come floating out and I can get to it. Um, I've got my tiller extension if I need it. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Uh, croaky. A spare prop. A funnel for oil and fuel. Uh, muffs. And then some Quicksilver uh, anti corrosion spray. Uh, this goes back in there real easy. And, uh, so that's been a really nice storage area for stuff. Um, and then coming back, we just got the good old kayak crate. So we got a fuel, fuel can up top. For all the holders on the sides, uh, extra fuel bottle, which shouldn't be used for fuel. Uh, tackle boxes, live well, air pump, live well, bait board. This is a whitewater throw rope. You whitewater guys recognize that. Um, I use it in whitewater, obviously, but I obviously carry it with me here too, just because it's extra rope. It's convenient if I need it. Um, and then anchor anchor lines in this little cup down there and then i've got my pliers and my fish grips in there so that works nicely and then that just clips back on there and then the motor mounts back here obviously you don't have it on there but that's kind of the setup for going out on the water now i think um, that'll keep most of the weight towards the back uh, i'm sitting more or less right in the middle uh and so the one to kind of playing out about here which is where you want it to for the best speed um, otherwise you're sagging the front you're just dragging too much hole and you're slapping that thing up against the waves and that slows you down really bad so we're gonna try this we'll get out in the water and i'll throw that video in and then i'll uh and it'll be done so excited thing is a uh, Great little ultra portable flats killer. So stay tuned. All right, so here's some more video of me. Uh, went back out and used it some more and tested some more. Honestly, um, it was great and all, but it's just a little bit slower than what I was hoping for. It wouldn't get up on plane, only do about five miles an hour. And the wind blew it around like crazy because it drafts so little and they have so much up above the waterline. So I ended up selling it. Um, uh, and uh, it just wasn't working out, so I sold it, was able to sell it pretty quick. And here's a little preview of what's coming next. That is an Avon rib boat. Those are made by Zodiac um, out of Britain, I believe is where they're built. So you see fiberglass hole, um, inflatable pontoons on the side, and then it came on that easy, easy rider trailer. And then he's got on the seat there, he's got this rod holder bait bucket it's slash catch all bin kind of rigged out in there, and then uh, you actually put the right fuel now. tank under there as well um and any other stuff you might have with you and that opens up there got a nice little bow hatch get the pump horn and you know, all your safety shit in there um and then so basically we're gonna be cleaning this thing up and um, I've actually got a Suzuki 20 horse EFI motor that I'm gonna put on it. And so this bitch ought to scream and <laughs> it should be pretty fun, but uh, I'm excited for it. It's gonna be a lot more fun than that skiff was. Um, not the shallow going, but that'll be all right. So stay tuned.